Happy first day of Romanticiathon! I'm starting a vlog for this week-long readathon that I'm doing with a bunch of lovely people that I will be tagging down in the comments, but me and Tori from Tori Between Pages are the hosts of the Dark Fantasy Romance Readers, and I'm so excited. So let me show you. I'll put the template up here, and let's talk about what I'm planning on reading for each of the prompts. So starting off with Forbidden Romance, we have Vow of the Shadow King, which is the sequel to Bride of the Shadow, Shadow King, which I read last year and I really need to get to the sequel, and it is a Forbidden Romance. And this one is like a really cool and unique concept and I loved it so much and I like started to read the sequel but then I just got like distracted by life things and I, it is time for me to read the sequel again. So we have the humans and the trolled folks. Okay, the troll and they're like a kind of elf, but they're like rock people, but they're hot. They're hot, that's important. They're making a deal and the trolled come to the human kingdom to make a pact and of course they're going to seal it with a marriage. And Farain and Vor like really connect when they are... All of the king's children have magical gifts, but her gift actually like leads to sensory overload and so she is kind of like cloistered away and is like the black sheep of the family so of course the king like isn't gonna want her to give her away to marriage like he wants to give away his favorite daughter um to really solidify this thing so vor ends up entering into a marriage with her sister but then a tragedy happens and Varane basically has to take on the identity of her sister and travel to the trolled underground rock kingdom. It's really cool, really good. Sylvia Mercedes is definitely more of like a just YA level of spice. It's not super spicy but it's really sweet and I've heard she might be like leveling up the spice a little bit but you know not everything has to be super super spicy and that's fine with me but it's a really intriguing book and I really loved the concept of a magical power being disabling. I don't think that that's something that's explored very much at all. Like usually magical powers are seen as good things. So I really enjoyed that aspect of the story and as well as like the tension between the two, like the push and pull of, of them. And I feel like in the reading the first book, the one thing that kind of annoyed me was that the author really advertised um, the whole plot of the book when she was advertising her book which like I was like waiting for a specific scene that she had advertised but it was like the last scene in the book so like that that's just like a small thing right so I'm going into the second book like really blind because I did overall really enjoy the story so that is my book for Forbidden Romance because clearly she can't be with him because he's supposed to marry her sister. Next for Morley Gray we have A Dawn of Onyx by Kate Golden and I was sent this by the author and I'm so excited to read it. I even got this cool little bookmark in my PR package with character art so now I just know how to picture the characters. I'm pretty sure these drawings are by uh, Mer Wild. Um, I love art. I love my brain needs to know how to picture people. Okay. So Arwen offers her life to save her brothers and she's been taken captive by the most dangerous kingdom in the world and forced to use her abilities to heal the soldiers of the vicious Onyx King. So she can't face the woods alone to try and escape and so she must work with a fellow prisoner but he's as infuriating as he is cunning and he seems to take twisted pleasure in playing on her deepest fears. Trust is a luxury that Arwen can't afford. So to make it out of enemy territory she'll have to navigate backstabbing royals, dark magic, and dangerous beasts. But untold power lies inside Arwen dormant and waiting for a spark. If she can harness it she might be able to escape with her life. Sounds so good. Morally gray I definitely have heard great things and I really of course have wanted to read it because the author sent it to me and I, that is very special to me. Next is a book you've been dying to get to and that is Long Live the Elf Queen by J.M. Curl which is a sequel to Bow Before the Elf Queen which as you can see I have a lot of tabs here so like, clearly I enjoyed it. So Layala has been in hiding her entire life because she knows that the wicked High King Thane is going to come for her one day because they were bound as infants in a mating ceremony. And it's interesting because in this one mates are only determined by a ceremony and by magic not like an innate thing. So I like that different take on mates. So now the day has come and she must come face to face with what she has hidden from which is a dangerous dark haired warrior king determined to marry her. And she plans to take her captors lives and free herself but Thane has a secret that makes it impossible for Layala to slay him. And she has an even darker truth that makes loving her forbidden. Good like forbidden romance and it's really fun. It's a very like whimsical and romantic. I would say it's like one chili pepper spicy but loved it. And so now we have the sequel. The first one of course ended on a cliffhanger 
banger, so I need to figure out what is going to happen in the next one. The last book in this saga is going to be called Fate Calls the Elf Queen, Queen so I think it's going to be a trilogy. And the last book is the group book, which is A Court of Ravens and Ruin, and it's about a human woman who is taken to be married to the Raven King, I think. Let me look that up. So Reyna is a rune-marked human, and she's captured by the Shadow King, and she doesn't know why he's kidnapped her, and then announces her as his betrothed. And she knows she needs to escape, but when he takes off his mask, he is not what she expected. I love fantasy romance. I'm so excited for this week and I can't wait, but I will say um, this start of the readathon has caught me in the middle of this book, Secretly Yours by Tessa Bailey, which is a rom-com. I've been in like a strictly rom-com just like era, like that's all I've been reading for like a month. Um, so I'm going to finish this and then get back to my fantasy romance girly era. So excited. Literally loving this so far. It's amazing. I can definitely finish it quickly, especially because after this I will be done with my tasks for the day and I can relax. Can't wait, so excited. I mean, this is not part of the reason, but I will finish that and will probably love it. I'm already loving it so far. And then here I have my two physical books for the readathon as well as the two Kindle books I'll be reading. And I think I am set up for a good week. Good morning. So I have been reading the group book, Court of Ravens and Ruin for the past few days. It's Wednesday. I'm still my first book of the readathon um, because work has been crazy. And I've been just like so tired at the end of the day. It is what it is. But this is like Norse inspired and it's about a human woman who's working as basically a slave in the gold fae court. And then she's captured by the shadow prince. And he like obviously wants something from her because she's just a human. Like why would he save her? And so far the intrigue is really good. I really like the Norse based fae mythology because I don't really see fae and Norse mythology mi mix much. So, so far really good atmospheric writing, really intriguing plot and it just made me realize how much I love fantasy romance and why I love fantasy romance. So I think that this was a really solid group book choice. So that is my really, really quick update because I got to run to work now, but just wanted to let you guys know. Hello, so it is now the Friday of the readathon and I'm still my first book. Um, because work killed me and I pretty much didn't read for the last two days. So I'm on 61% and I am really, really liking this book. I think that the mythology and the setup is interesting and unique and definitely different than other fantasy romances. I just love this like genre of like KU fantasy romance. It's pretty much my favorite. So I'm always excited to read new ones, read what's popular, read, just read them all. Just read them all. I could live my life just reading these kinds of fantasy romances for the rest of my life. So very excited to finally be back in a fantasy mood and I will keep you updated as I keep reading. Hopefully I will finish soon. In the meantime, one of the prompts for the dark romance team is to share your coffee order. So I am a Dunkin' girly and I get half decaf because I have a very low caffeine tolerance. Um, three hazelnut shot, two Splenda, three cream um, because I have sweet tooth and that's how I drink my coffee. Love Duncan. It's amazing. Best place ever. So now I'm going to drink my coffee and read my book and keep you guys updated. Okay, so. Now the light's not good this way. I wanted to use my ASMR room as like a cute little background, but lighting, not good in that direction. So I finished the group book and I loved it. I feel like it was a really good set up into the world and it was really good at building the tension. Like it's very slow burn and like there is a payoff in the end, but in a way that you know that the relationship still has a lot to develop. So it's keeping me interested and wanting to tune in for future books. There was also a lot of intrigue and plot lines laid that... Again, like they weren't answered in this book, so it makes me want to tune in for the next book. So I definitely feel like it was paced very well. Lots of intrigue. The spice was good, um, but it was, like I said, it was done in such a way that it's like building it up for future books. So I think um, even in the description, it said like it's going to get spicier as it goes. So I think it was a very good intro to the world and to our characters and to kind of the situation that's going on and is leaving enough room for it to continue to develop. Like it wasn't too overdone in this first book if you kind of get what I'm saying. So I think that the second book is coming out March 31st and I'll probably be picking it up. So the next book I have on queue for the readathon is, so I went over my TBR earlier, right? So we had the group book, Vow of the Shadow King, Dawn of Onyx, and Long Live the Elf Queen. So 
<clears throat> Dawn of Onyx is next because I've been meaning to read this one for months because the author sent this to me and I've been hearing a lot of good things and like if an author like especially fantasy romance authors reaching out to me to send me something I'm gonna read it. I think it definitely has to do with like jewels because the second one is a promise of peridot. peridot. Here's the character bookmark so this is Arwen and then I guess this is like the other guy that she's working with. I do think this is Mer Wild art, which love to see it because I love Mer Wild art and I love when authors commission it for their characters. And now I have an easy way to picture these characters right in front of me. So very excited. I I just love fantasy romance. I'm so excited I'm doing this readathon, even if the <laughs> I didn't really do that well in the beginning stages because life was kicking my butt. But I'm here now. I'm gonna start a Dawn of Onyx, and I do think there are sprints at 4 p.m. that I will be able to tune into. So I'm very excited to do reading sprints with everyone. And that is all for now. Okay, so it's later now, and I'm reading a Dawn of Onyx, and I'm on page 142. It's actually going really, really fast. Um, so we follow Arwen and she basically has this healing ability and she's captured for it and brought to the Onyx Kingdom and all of the kingdoms are based on different stones and there she meets a fellow prisoner that's like really kind of like infuriating and cunning um, but you know in order to find her way out of the place she's been in prison and get back to her family she might need to like strike a deal with him and it's very intriguing so far and I feel like it's really picking up in pace now and I'm really intrigued to see where it's gonna go I feel like I could just keep reading this for like all night so I'm just gonna keep reading and keep you guys updated on my progress I was supposed to join in on reading sprints but I got the time wrong so I guess I'm not doing those anymore <sighs> okay I need to go to bed, um, but I just read this entire thing today, and it was amazing, and I will give more cohesive thoughts tomorrow, but I finished my second book for the readathon, so I'm feeling hope that I can pick myself back up and finish my books by the end of my, like, self-imposed readathon ending, which is gonna end Tuesday night because I have off through Tuesday, so time for bed. Okay, so it's the next day. And I finished A Dawn of Onyx last night. I literally read this in one day and it was so good. I just feel like it had the perfect mix of everything fantasy romance with this girl who's kidnapped for her healing abilities and she gets taken to the Onyx King's stronghold and there's this like fellow prisoner here there that like she's befriending and she asks him for help to escape and he's like very cunning but also very infuriating and it's their journey and it's just full of all of the fantasy romance goodness. There's like good amount of plot, good amount of tension. The tension was really good and it's definitely gonna be kind of drawn out into the next book, which that's always kind of good, right? Like you always want to make sure you're keeping the tension high between the characters so the relationship doesn't bec become boring. And I thought that that was like handled very well. I loved Arwen. I loved Cain. Like I loved their story. I just think that this is like the epitome of what fantasy romance is and so if you're a fan of the genre definitely check it out so now i'm moving on to long live the elf queen i just started it before and i'm on page 39 so what i loved about this was this is the best thing ever a recap in the beginning more authors need to do this because that was so helpful i'm like oh yeah that happened because i forgot not everything, but I forgot some of the finer details. And it was literally just a page, just like the bare bones, but it was enough to jog my memory of everything that happened. So in this book, we're following Layala and she has this really cool plant magic. It's a good time. And now we have the second book and definitely the plot is thickening. There's more things going on and we're in some really dire circumstances in the beginning of this book. So I can't wait to continue. I'm excited to be back into this world because I just think, again, this is like another really good fantasy romance and it's a very good example of what the genre is. So loving it, having so fun. Um, I am extending my own personal romantic a thon a few more days because now I finally have um, time off. I have a long holiday weekend, so I'm taking full advantage of it, relaxing and just reading all of my favorite fantasy romance books and I will keep you guys updated. The last one that I have is um, Vow of the Shadow King. I might still read that or I might change it out for something else. I haven't decided yet, but I mean, I like it, but I might try reading one of my physical books because I tend to want to read physical books like while I'm 
at home for a few days because my Kindle I can read very on the go. So Kindle books I like to kind of read during the week, especially when I get tired after work and I just lay in bed in the dark. So I tend to prioritize physical books on the weekend. That's the only thing. But we'll see. Um, but that's my update for now. Camera's about to die, so I have to go quick. I, of course, had a full face of makeup on. Just took it all off and then remembered to film this vlog clip. But I did film a TVR and a wrap up, so I'm proud of myself for getting back to my regularly scheduled videos. <sighs> Anyways, it's now Monday and I'm still reading Long Live the Elf Queen. It's a little bit longer. Um, I will say I feel like it's a little bit drawn out in points. I still like it, I just feel like it's a little bit slow paced. In terms of spiciness, I would call this like one spicy pepper. The author kind of does things where, and this is okay. Um, Different authors are comfortable with writing different levels of spice, but it's definitely like a lot of metaphors instead of like actually describing what's going on, which is fine. But just go into this knowing this, still a really great and rich fantasy story going on. So I'm truly enjoying it. I love these covers too. I just think they're so pretty. And it's kind of hinting at some things that are going to happen and making me intrigued for the next novel. i give an update when I get further, but like I said, a little bit long. I don't totally mind that, um, but I would like to finish this and at least make some headway on my third book, no, my fourth book of the readathon and like finish that by tomorrow, which is like my extended readathon for myself end goal and then let you guys know how I feel about like all four of these fantasy romance books because if you saw my March TBR which should go up before this I'm back in my fantasy romance mood ready to be a fantasy romance girly yet again so bring it on bring on all the fantasy romance but gotta finish this one first okay it is almost a week after romantic a -thon ended but I finally did finish my TBR so that's an accomplishment <laughs> the last time I checked in I was reading Long Live the Elf Queen by Jane Curl which is the sequel to Bow Before the Elf Queen, and I like this sequel. I do think it wasn't as strong as the first book because I think it just has a little bit of middle book syndrome. Like, there's a, it's long, it's thick, their pace slowed down a lot, um, and it's also like these characters aren't building up towards their relationships, so some of that tension wasn't there as much, but, but, we were introduced to a very surprising and twisting plot twist at the end of this book that I think is going to set up the next book to be really, really good. And I still was engaged throughout it. I, do I wish it was a little bit shorter for what it was? Yes, but I still overall really enjoyed my experience. And I really like Layala's character. She's super fierce. I like this world, great world building. Spice is like a, a one chili pepper. It's a pretty low spice series, but still really enjoy it. Very good romantic fantasy, despite not being like too spicy, but solid overall. Four stars. Then I read Vow of the Shadow King, which is the sequel to Bride of the Shadow King, and I read this one on Kindle, and I have to say this book is actually so good. Like, I was reading it and the world building is just absolutely amazing, and the second book really upped the stakes. We got a spicy scene, which is good because this author doesn't really do spicy scenes. Uh, I'm sure it's like more so like clean low spice fantasy romances but she she gave us a spicy scene and I was very excited about it and it worked well for the character development like the tension between the characters was still kept really high and um I this world is so cool because she created what's known as the underrealm which is where the troll trolled folk live they're basically like troll fae so they like are their whole like religion and way of being is centered on the fact that they live like in this underground world and there's all these like crystals and like magic and I just thought the world building was so cool and so different from any book that I had ever read and the world building really like continued and was upped a notch in the second book and I'm so excited for the third book. I think it comes out in September and I can't wait to see what's going to happen. I feel like Farain, she's our main character so she has this power where she can sense the emotions of others and it really overwhelms her to the point where it's like sensory overload and it's almost like um, a disability and I've never seen a power be represented as something negative as a disability um but she really kind of comes in her own in this book but still has this like chronic struggle and I feel like it's like a very good fantasy chronic illness rep obviously it's not a chronic illness that exists in our world but it's still like the same principles um so I I think it's just explored very beautifully and I love the way their relationship developed it's just so so good and I've read some of her other work and I think this might be her best 
her best yet so please go check this out if you are at all interested in it and that is just my little wrap up for this romanticia thon it did take me longer to get through my tbr i knew that it was going to be because work has been super busy lately but i did read all four books that i set out to read thank you again to tori and all the other co-hosts for hosting this um thank you to tori for creating it and i just had so much fun hosting it with everyone i didn't get to join any sprints but because my life has been insane, but it's it was really fun and I had such a good time and I feel like it really reignited my love for fantasy romance because I hadn't really been in a fantasy romance mood before this. So definitely look out for more fantasy romance content in the future. So let me know if you guys read any of these books and what your thoughts are and have some fun, read some books, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.